God the Father. Thank you. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. And come worship with us. And a place you can learn and grow. There's no place. Like a new beginning. Now all we're missing is you. Come join us. Hello to, to everyone that's, who are viewing us from uh, home there for our Sunday school lesson on uh, March the 20th. Uh, before we get started, I'm Deacon Murchison. I'll be going over the lesson there. We'll get started with prayer, though. Our Father in heaven, Almighty God, Father, just again, we just give you thanks and praise uh, for allowing us to uh, be part of this lesson today, Father God. Father God, we ask that the Holy Spirit to come in and bring clarity and understanding. Uh, to your word there, that we may be able to share it with others, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And again, we're still in the Old Testament, uh, about rebuilding of the uh, temple. Our lesson to that title today is Celebrate Passover Liberation. Celebrate Passover Liberation it, uh, comes from Ezra chapter 6, verses 13 to 22. Aim for change. By the end of this lesson, we will explore the celebration prompt by the completion of the new temple, identify reasons to celebrate God's goodness, and join together and believe, as believers in the celebrating and the sharing our good news of God's love there. And we have uh, three outlines today. The first outline is the people finish and rejoice. They're talking about the temple there. That goes from verse 13 to 16. Second outline, the people of Israel offer sacrifices there. In our third and last outline, the uh, feast celebrate 19 to 22. Keep in mind, and the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the children of the captivity kept this delegation of this house of God with uh, joy there. And we've been talking about uh, that God had... Uh, Punished them for being obedient and, and uh, teaching the wrong thing, pro prophesizing about the wrong thing. And that's when they were sent into captivity there. He told them after 70 years, 70 years he was going to bring them out. And that is what he is doing now. God keep, keeps his promise there. Uh, but he just didn't bring them out. They, uh, he wanted them to go back and build a house for the Lord there. So he uh, put, God put people in places. I always say he had prayed. People in places for us when we are doing things that we just need to move uh, when they tell us to. So he had to, uh, we, we studied about these kings that he put in place to help them get back to Jerusalem and build, build a house for uh, God uh, there. And uh, I like this lesson because it's, it uh, kind of shares the experience with uh, uh, what we had when we was building this church here. There, uh, uh, Many of you won't, won't uh, know all the behind-the-camera things that went on to get this church built uh, there. I myself had just uh, retired from the uh, Army, and I think right after that, Brother Fraser retired uh, from in the, uh, where he worked at. And Pastor Bro won't run and uh, uh, was busy with his business uh, there. So there was a lot of things he couldn't do. So he said, I'm going to put you two deacons to work there. And so he did. And there were so many things that we'd done behind the camera. Like I say, many of you never know that uh, where we had to go downtown and get these certificates so we could uh, do any work uh, uh, on the property here. You just can't come out here and just start working. You had to have a certificate. And I recall uh, two incidents. And I went down on uh, Jefferson there to get the certificate. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know at all. <laughs> but I just went there. Uh, like I say, I... I just thought God had people in place as far. And I went to one building, and they sent me down to another one. And this guy down to the other building, he was very arrogant and stuff there. 
But before I left the first building, I had uh, uh, put in for a 90, uh, well, I actually had put in for a 30 day certificate. And he sent me back, this other guy sent me back up to the, the building when I first began that. And I was talking to the guy for some reason, somehow, I don't know how I did it, but he had, had already made up a certificate for 90 days, not 30 days. <laughs> and that just shows you how God moved, how he intervened. Pastor always said if the church was going to get built, God was going to have to intervene in it. And Brother Fraser and I would just have to go downtown to city council there and do paperwork. And again, like I said, we didn't know what we were doing. didn't have a clue. But like I said, God had people in place. So we run up on this uh, African-American woman and this Hispanic man. And they said, we're going to help y'all. We're going to help y'all. Y'all got the wrong farm. Go get this farm filled out and bring it back to us. So we did. And the first time we went before the city council, I don't think they really enjoyed us uh, that much. So we had to come back again there. And uh, this fence right out here, which the brick wall is four feet uh, high, and the wood fence is six feet. They wanted us to put another fence there. I said, no, this can't be right there. And even in the back, they wanted us to put a, a fence. These are the people that sit behind the desk. They have never come out and see what's going on. They were just looking at what was on paper. So I was telling uh, Brother Frazier, I said, this can't be right. I said, what are we going to do? I measured it. And well, well, the people downtown, those two people that helped downtown, they said, y'all go back, uh, measured it, take some pictures of it. Then I, I took the picture of it and gave them to Brother Fraser. He put them in the bind, binding. They were nat, nice and neat there. So we went back down there, and these two people that was helping us took that to the city council. And when it came for, up for our time to speak, they said, y'all good. Y'all ain't got to do nothing. Go back and, and build your building there. And that's why I say God has people in places for us, and we see this in this lesson today as well there. We'll go, get, go ahead and get started. We've been doing it for about three weeks uh, now, Ezra, in the book of Ezra there. And as always, I always like to get some background on the lesson. Uh, lesson text was Ezra 6, 13, 22. Time of action was between 5, 16 B.C. Place of action was Jerusalem. Uh, introduction. So in this week's lesson, we see God hand at work in unfolding his divine plan for, man, uh, for mankind. Through the prophet, God had given his prophecy that the children of Israel would go into cap captivity for 70 years. That's what I said before because of their sin. In our lesson, we see God having moved on the hearts of pagan rulers as well as his own people to get them out of captivity and back to the promised land. Once back home, the Israelites was to rebuild the temple and reestablish the prescribed worship at God. <clears throat> out of the chaos of defeat and captivity, God was restoring worship and great joy to his people. And again, I say, God, don't go back on his promises today. He told them that he was going down in captivity for 70 years. After 70 years, he was going to bring them back out. He didn't tell them how, but he already had the plan to use these uh, pagan rulers to help them get back. Not only help them get back, they took the materials and uh, gold and silver and livestock, everything they needed. God uh, had touched these pagan rulers hard to give it to them there. So they go, go back and build the house of uh, uh, God uh, there. Let's go ahead and get to start with our first outline here. <clears throat> uh, let me get this paper right. First thing says, Then Tetna, governor of uh, this side of the river, Sheta Bozana, and their company and their companion according to that which Darius the king had sent. So they did speedily. And the elders of the Jews built and they prospered through the prophesying of Hagar, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Ido, and they built and finished it according to the commandments of God of Israel and according to the commandments of Cyrus and Darius and other Zechariah, the king of Persia. Verse 15, and this house was finished on the third day of the month, Adar, which was in the sixth year of the ring of Darius the king. Verse 16, and the children of Israel, the priests and the Levite, and the rest of the children of the captive, kept the dedication of this house, uh, God would joy there. And again, it tells us that they went in, the, the children of Israel, and they 
built the house uh, uh, speedily there. They didn't waste any time uh, in building uh, the house. So uh, 16 years later, it took them 16 years later, so during the ring of uh, the uh, Persian King Cyrus, the foundation of the temple were laid, but work stopped on the temple until the second year of uh, King Darius, which was about 520 B.C. And they, as they started to build it, they stopped. They stopped. They got lazy there. They stopped there on building. Uh, so that was both sides and inside opposition that caused this delay. The opposition from outside came from Judah, the enemy, who requested to help in the building project was denied. The delay in completing the temple also had opposition from within Israel as the people put their own interests first and became lax in finishing the work. Like I said, they kind of got lazy there and they stopped building it. Because of this, the Lord sent a famine through the, throughout uh, Judah, draining the people of their resources. When the building project was resumed 16 years later, later, after the foundation was fittings. Now they had laid the foundation first, then like I say, they got lax and they started arguing with this group and that group. So uh, 16 later, 16 years later, then they started to reveal uh, the temple there, temple there. So the Persian official place in Israel uh, wanted to know who gave the returning captive the authority to uh, rebuild the temple. They sent a letter to King Darius and asked him to in investigate. So they had all these records uh, probably in a safe place there. So King Darius went and researched, and he found uh, this uh, decree. So these people, they sent a letter to King Darius and asked him to investigate that, so he did. So when he did, he found the decree that King uh, Cyrus had made authorizing the rebuilding project along with the specific instruction for uh, rebuilding the temple. He found all the information that they needed uh, to rebuild uh, build the uh, temple there. So then King Darius uh, issued his own decree, commanding his officials in Israel to stop hindering the work. In addition, he also ordered them to use tax money for building supplies as well as for sacrifice. So Darius even issued a decree of capital punishment for anyone who changed his decree and hindered the work there. So he was real serious about uh, continuing uh, this uh, building process, says there. Oh, we're going to go ahead now. Uh, verse 14 said, And the elders of the Jews build, and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Ida, and they build and finished it according to the commands of God there. So they got back started, and they didn't stop until they had completed uh, the temple. So they had uh, now with support of the Persian official, the Jews, uh, elder, continue to build uh, the temple. Uh, there, <clears throat> so the uh, so Hagar he rebuked he rebuked the people for stopping the work of the temple to build their own houses. They stopped building the temple and they went to building their own houses with the resources that were given to uh, complete the temple with. So, I, however, now he uh, encouraged the uh, leaders of uh, Zerubbabel and, and Joshua by prophesying the glorious future of the second temple uh, there. Zechariah also prophesied about Israel's future in order to encourage the people. He prophesied about a glorious future for Jerusalem there. And some of the old people that uh, they probably were young when they went into captivity, but now they are old. They remember the uh, temple that uh, King Solomon built there. Uh, this temple, it was nice, but it wasn't elaborate as the one that uh, uh, King Solomon built. And it wasn't even uh, as big as the one that King Solomon built. Uh, built there. So they, were, they remember that. <clears throat> and verse 15, and this house was finished on the third day of the month of Adar, which was in the sixth year of the ring of Darius the king. <clears throat> so the month Adar was the twelfth month on the Hebrew religious calendar. It coincided with our mid-February and March, the sixth year of the ring of king, uh, ring of uh, Darius the king there. So uh, it's just telling us uh, give us the calendar dates uh, about the temple there. So this was 20 years after they began to construct the temple and almost 70 years after, they first, after the first temple was destroyed by the Babylonia. So even though there was uh, some Jews who was unhappy with the size of the new temple, is what I was saying, because they remembered how the uh, 
temple that Solomon built was and stuff. So they were a little bit, uh, the older Jews were a little bit unhappy. Uh, so the first temple stood for almost 400 years. 400 years, uh, the first temple almost uh, stood uh, there in Jerusalem uh, before it was destroyed there. Uh, but the second was, uh, temple stood for uh, about 586 years and including improvements made by King Herod. King Herod, it's it, it interesting that the second temple stood for about 586 years, and the first temple was destroyed in, five, in 586 B.C. So it was hard to believe that this is, the, this is a coincidence, uh, more, like, more likely than not. It is further proof of the presence of the hand of God there. And that gonna, uh, that's going to end our first, uh, end our, our first outlines there. We'll go to our second outline, which is... Uh, Goes from verse 17 to 18 there. Here, Ezra, Ezra continues to write that the people offered at the dedication of his house of God a hundred uh, bullocks, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and for a sin offering for all Israel, 12 he goats. According to the number of the tribes of Israel, that's the, the he goats, the twelve represented the number of uh, the tribes of Israel uh, there. So at the dedication of the temple, they offered uh, as sacrifice to God, and we just not, uh, uh, gave you all the numbers of what they uh, offered there. And so all twelve tribes were rep represented by the twelve he goats. Remember, it, uh, even though all twelve tribes were not re represented, the sin offering was uh, probably included because this was Israel, sin that led to the destruction of the first temple and the end of the worship during the 70 years uh, captivity there. That's verse 17. That was our uh, second line. Well, no, 18. Let me go to 18, verse 18. And it reads, as they set the priests in their division and the Levites in their course for the service of God, which is at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. So now that the temple was restored, <coughs> excuse me, the leaders, Jeshua and Zerubbabel, set the priests in their division, in other words, set them in their proper places, and the Levites in their court to carry on the service of the Lord. So as it is written in the book of Moses, King David had set up the, up the system uh, division and courses of time are time to serve for the priest and the Levite, and this this was uh, set up uh, a orderly thing. It was wasn't just something just put it put in place. It was set in order uh, there. <clears throat> so this was the structure, the responsibility, and the duties of the priest and the Levite. So, however, Ezra emphasized emphasis was not on David's instruction, but as it is written in the books of Moses as the one who gave the original instruction for priestly and Le Levitical duties. So Moses held in the high sixteen, Moses was held in the high sixteen of the, of the Jews. So the book of Moses probably referred to the book of Leviticus, which gives more details of the many offering made by Israel there. That was verse uh, 17. We go to our last, uh, verse 18, excuse me. We go to our last uh, outline. The feast celebrates 19 to 22. 19, and the children of the captive kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. And they, they kept the same original uh, festivity that Moses had established there. After the returning captives to dedicate the uh, rebuilt temple during the 12th month of uh, Adar, they kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. The first month on the Hebrews' religious calendar <coughs> was Abba uh, Nisan. It was uh, correlated with our month of March uh, through mid-April. The feast of Passover, according to the law, was to be followed directly by the feast of unleavened bread on the 15th day of Nisan and last seven days, and lasted seven days. This is how long the celebration was. <coughs> Excuse me there. So God instituted the feast of the Passover while Israel was in bondage in Egypt. So after a uh, series of plague failed to convince Pharaoh for the free, to free the Hebrews, God said that he would send uh, the destroying angel to kill the firstborn in every household. However, the angels would pass over every home that had blood uh, from 
an un un unblemished male lamb placed it on the top in a uh, rounded uh, door frame, the uh, lint or some Bible uh, uh, called it. So in the New Testament time, Passover became a pilgrimage festival. Large number of Jews gathered in Jerusalem to observe this annual celebration. Jesus was crucified <clears throat> during one of these Passover celebrations and instituted the Lord's Supper while he ate the Passover meal with his disciple uh, on the eve of his uh, death uh, there. This was, this was the, uh, what all this was leave it leading up to in the New, the New Testament uh, there, where Jesus uh, ate with his disciples on uh, the Last Supper uh, there. Verse 20, for the priests and the Levites were purified together, all of them was pure, and killed the Passover <coughs> for all the children of uh, the captivity, and for their brethren, the priests, and for themselves. So the returning captive was able to celebrate the uh, Passover at the proper time because the priests and the Levites were purified together. All of them was pure. So in order to perform their duty, the priests and the Levites had to be purified or cleansed from ceremonial uncleanness according to the law of Moses there. The pur purification of the priests and Levites was so important that during King he Hezekiah ring, the Passover was put off until the second month because they had not been properly cleansed there. Uh, that's what verse 20 is telling us. Uh, verse 21 says, And the children of Israel, uh, Israel which was uh, come again out of the captivity, and all such had, had separ separated themselves unto them from the fitness of the heathen of the land to seek uh, the Lord God of uh, Israel. Did he? And again, they've been down there so long, they had picked up some of those pagan habits. So they had to be cleansed again there. So we are told that everyone who returned to Israel from captivity did eat the Passover meal. Ezra was also saying that they were joined by such a hand, separate themselves unto them for, from the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek the Lord God of uh, Israel. And this is what I was saying. Some of them have been down in there for 70 years, had picked up some of the bad habits from the Gentile uh, who had settled in the land uh, there. And verse 22 in our last verse, <clears throat> our final verse says that everyone mentioned in the previous verse kept the feast of uh, unleavened bread seven days with joy, for the Lord had made them joyful and turned the hearts of the kings of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. So as noted earlier, the day after Passover was the feast of the unleavened bread, which lasted seven days. Uh, Ezra right and let us know that the people kept, uh, observed the feast of unleavened bread for seven days. They were following all the uh, order that is supposed to be gone, supposed to be taken in. They all shared in both the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread joyfully, they was a special job that God had turned the hearts of the kings of Syria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. So even though they was allowed to return home, is there a question, and you can get with me on Sunday, you know, uh, before we went down for COVID, I used to have five questions to ask. Someone just asked one this time, and you can get with me on Sunday if you have the answer for it. So he said, uh, even though they was allowed to return home to rebuild their temple, the Jews, were the Jews still under Persian control? That is the question there. Were the Jews still under Persian contro control even after they were allowed to turn home and rebuild the house of God? Yeah. So again, uh, we just uh, hope that you understood the lesson and got something out of it. And I just wanted to share, at the beginning, share something person, personal with you. And it's true. Uh, me and Deacon Fraser were talking about it yesterday, the things that went into this building that uh, a lot of us would not know about what it taken to build this building here there. And some things in my own personal life that I know God had people in place uh, uh, to help me. I just had to move in the, in the time that he told me. I remember I was retiring from uh, the uh, military and I wanted to get me a house there. And I uh, went and done all the paperwork and stuff. And back that time in 2003, 
interest rate was high, like 7, 8 percent there. And they wanted to charge me 8 percent for interest rate there. I said, oh, no, that don't seem right to me. But God put it on my heart when I went back to uh, Colleen to go see this uh, realtor down in Colleen. And I did, and just so happened, she happened to be a Christian lady there. And she pulled out this uh, laws on uh, Texas there, and she started scratching that up. She said, they can't charge you for this, they can't charge you for that, they can't charge you for this. She said, I, she said, I can get your interest rate down to about uh, 5%. And that was good back in those days there. And that's why I continue to say that God had people in place for her. And every year on my birthday and Christmas time, she still sent me a uh, card there. And uh, I just thank uh, God, and I keep on trusting in Him. We should be do the same thing. I know this is a, a lesson about the Old Testament, but I think we can benefit out of it as well there. Again, we want to thank you for listening in. Have any questions, uh, comments, uh, something that I said wrong, you can get with me in church there. Uh, just call me there. That's the end of our Sunday, that's the school, our Sunday school lesson. We will pray us out. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word heaven, today. We thank you for the understanding. And we thank you for the uh, people that you put in place to help us accomplish certain missions and personal things that's uh, in our lives. Yeah, Father God. We pray this prayer and teach us.